everyone. Good evening, our distinguished guests. Like Welcome to the uh, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board of Monday, January the 30th, 2023. I'm finally getting used to saying 2023 versus 2022. Uh, we're meeting in the steel uh, community room, and the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any amendments to the agenda? Krista, do you have your... No, I was just waving to Danny. <laughs> hey, Danny. Hello. Any, any, uh, any amendments to the agenda? I hear none. Uh, we'll vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 And, and any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda item for the minutes of January 19th and January 23rd, and to approve a second class liquor license for side street beverage. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items? Sure. I'll second motion. it. We have a second. Second. Any any um, discussion on the consent agenda items? Uh, Alyssa noticed that there was one small uh, amendment to the minutes. Uh, my uh, the vote on the uh, license for the uh, beer tasting in the park uh, was uh, passed for to zero uh, with one abstention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have that one amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? If not, we'll uh, look to pass the entire uh, amended uh, uh, consent agenda uh, items. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next item where we're at is uh, the item where we can receive um, comments from the public. These items would be anything that's not on the formal agenda item. Does anyone have anything to say, um, speak to the select board on? Nothing in Zoom land? Crickets, uh, crickets. Therefore, we will continue on uh, to select board items. Uh, the first item on the agenda is Better Connections Grant. That must be Siebert. That's me. Just yeah. in time. Steve's all right. Everyone's a little slick. Just on time. Yes, I know. Oh, okay. Sorry to slide in. You came in just at the right time. Yeah, good, good. So um, I send you some information on Saturday morning, and um, I've got the handout if anybody would like a copy. I printed them for everybody. You did? OK, good. Oh, good. you got them here? You've got the email and the, the um, attachment. OK, great. OK, sorry about good. that. I figured you'd be prepared, but I figured just, about material. just in case. Never. We have good help here. Too. Good, good. So um, this is a program. I mentioned in my email that, uh, and I'll uh, repeat that for the benefit of uh, the public and others that are here. Uh, it's a program of the Vermont Agency of Transportation and of the um, Agency of Commerce and Community Development. And uh, it's been going on for several years now. And <clears throat> the focus is to look at um, village areas, downtown areas, and um, study ways to better connect the different parts of villages, to look at infrastructure, to look at uh, access and uh, equity for um, citizens and for others. Um, Oops, did we lose? Zoom oh, I think it's just the HDMI. Just wiggle it a little. It oh. just went. I'm like, what is, that, what is that face for? No, sorry. It just it was gone, but clearly you can see it. Sorry, sorry, Steve. Oh no, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure that um... it's on the screen, on her screen. Yeah. It's an owl issue. Okay, as long as Danny's there, so that we can. 
Oops. So, you know, I, just uh, I found that the owl works better plugged into the wall there it is. for some reason. Yeah. Oh, it just blinks. The owl will, will, there it goes. Oh, okay, go. good. Okay. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, sorry. Good. They're back. Good. So, um, start where I left off. Um, so, uh, it's a um, joint program of uh, VTrans and uh, the State Agency of Commerce and Community Development. And um, to get right to the chase, we're proposing a project in Waterbury Center Village. And um, Karen, Nevin, and Jane Brown and I met today with, uh, with staff. We did our so-called uh, pre-flight interview. And uh, so this is really just an introduction to the project. And then we'll come back to you with uh, a more detailed application, a budget, and so on. But uh, the basic parts of the project would be to look at how to better connect the two parts of Waterbury Center Village, the area around the Green and the Grange Hall, the area along Route 100 in the vicinity of Cold Hollow Cider Mill, look at uh, pedestrian access and safety, look at uh, traffic calming, look at uh, potentially uh, wayfinding signage, uh, and also look at stormwater management. The, um, the State Agency of Natural Resources is also involved in the project, uh, and they want to look at potential stormwater projects in these areas. There was a study done back in 2018 that um, looked at uh, potential treatment in areas like the highway garage, uh, the center green, um, Hope Davy Park, and so on, and see if there are ways to address uh, water quality. Uh, we've got a number of um, hydrologically connected uh, road areas along Hollow Road and Howard Avenue. So that's another part of this project. So tonight, what we're really just um, wanting to discuss with you is um, if you support us moving ahead with the project, uh, this would be started in uh, 2023. Uh, the grant period is usually about a year and a half, so it would probably be spread over two years. The budgets are typically in the seventy to $90,000 range, and there's a 10% local match required. It's 80% uh, federal, 10% state, and it's split between different agencies. So. Um, it's uh, transportation type funding, but it's really geared to planning. So I, um, we're currently doing the park study, so we would tie that in with Hope Davy Park, look at access to Hope Davy. Um, I mentioned accessibility. We'd look at uh, ADA access in the village areas. We'd look at uh, parking in the vicinity of the triangle, uh, the triangular green, and, um, <coughs> and so on. So I'm really here just to um, answer questions that you might have, see if you support uh, us moving ahead with preparing a grant application, and um, go from there. So Steve, when you mentioned storm, storm water, <clears throat> um, is there a separate funding mechanism that could possibly cover some of that stormwater costs, or is that included? Do you think that's included in this proposal? So the funding for the planning side of it is included in the grant, and uh, it would just be one component. The implementation would be separate programs through the state's uh, clean water fund, okay, and uh, and so on. But it would basically uh, look at what projects the town wants to embark on. And um, as I say, the, the State Agency of Natural Resources did a study in um, about 2018 that looked at this whole area that I'll share with you, because it's pretty interesting to see what they came up with. They did a project in the village back, I think, in 2006, looking at potential stormwater treatment in Waterbury Village. And then they looked at Waterbury Center um, 
as I mentioned, uh, around 2018. So it would be total, they would be a &R programs that we would look at, possibly working through the Regional Planning Commission to identify projects for implementation. Yeah, I'm happy to hear that because everything there bleeds into the reservoir. Right. You know, so it's yep. uh, critical to, if we can capture some of that and get it treated before it gets into the lake, it's- uh, Absolutely. Be a big benefit. Yeah. So this would be a uh, 10% uh, would be about a nine thousand uh, dollar match uh, on the part of the town. Approximately, yeah. The projects typically run in the seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollar range, mm -hmm. and that would be coming out of the twenty three budget. So you know, well, that's something that we're going to need to discuss. Um, yeah. So we have. Um, we have another grant plugged into the 2023 budget that we haven't been awarded yet, and that had a 10% match. So if we don't get that grant, we've got some funds. But I guess I would say to you is that um, in the context of the budget, um, if we have to find $9,000 during the course of the year, we can probably do that. And some of this will likely be defrayed into 2024. Correct. Yeah, it'll be split over Couple probably years, two probably, years. So. I expect, you know, if you apply soon, the grant announces probably comes out in a couple months. Right. Probably don't start work until the summer to engage a consultant. All this takes a little bit of time. So we could have somewhere between, you know, I'm guessing zero to 5,000 in 2023. Mm -hmm. So Steve, yep. we're looking at doing some work on the ground in 23. Well, purely planning. Just, so just the planning. Yeah, the public participation. Um, yeah, it would be purely planning. Implementation is not going to be in 2023. That's probably several years down the road. One of the benefits of this program is that it would make the Waterbury Center Village eligible. If we get the grant, do the study, we would be eligible for downtown transportation funds. And that is um, for, the, for the center. For the center, correct. It's currently not eligible, but um, we have a designated village there, but it's not eligible. But this would um, open up that opportunity for funding for sidewalks or for um, some other uh, wayfinding signage, uh, other kinds of projects, traffic calming, that sort of thing would be eligible. So does this add to our downtown designation? Is this like a separate designation for the center? So we, right, we have a village designation right. for the part of the village around the green. It doesn't include the area along Route 100, right. but I think it, this doing this project would make it all eligible for that grant program down the road. Yeah. And does this uh, incorporate any connectivity between the village and the center? I know there's been some work done on a uh, community path that runs up uh, along the side of the, uh, of the golf club and right. some further thought about creating bikeways or something like that. Is that part of this or is that different? I think, you know, it certainly is something we could look at, um, but I think this is going to focus in the village areas and connecting those two areas together. Um, that we've looked at that path connection. We've done a couple of different studies uh, mm -hmm. starting early in my career here. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, definitely has its challenges. I can share some of that information with you. But um, at this point, this project wouldn't look at that in any kind of detail. Okay. Yeah. Other, other questions? Danny? Okay. Do we need any? Uh, Motion I don't think we need a motion. I, we're we're going to want to come back with you with more detail. We basically we always like to introduce these grant projects, give you a heads up, get your input, and then come back. Probably February thirteenth, we come back with a detailed proposal. But no, I don't think. Do you think we need any kind of motion at this point, Tom? It's you really don't need, you don't need a motion yeah. unless the board is comfortable authorizing you to apply at this point. They could give a motion. Yeah, I, I would suggest we wait. I'd much rather come back with more detail and a detailed budget. We'll probably talk to a consultant or two about the project. So I would prefer to wait and uh, bring bring back more detail. What consultants are you looking at? Uh, no, 
Not in particular. You know, we're currently working with SC Group, and we definitely can talk to them about the project. But um, there are other consultants that are working on these better connections projects for other communities. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait till the yeah, we would do a request for proposal once we, if we get the grant funding, you know, to get a consultant. So. Okay. Sounds, sounds good, Steve. So, so it sounds like something that you'd support and um, like to have us move forward with. Yeah, the village is kind of like sort of comes a little bit no man's land sometimes. It just, you know. You mean the center? It's the center. Yeah. You know, people sometimes don't really think, think it's kind of, you know, especially having lost a store and right. stuff like that. Right. You know, it doesn't have the, you know, cachet. Well, points. the store has sort of changed orientation. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So yeah, it needs some uh, you know placemaking, some identity kind of uh, exactly. fostering identity and everything. So that's really the, one of the purposes yeah, of this program. Look, like now, most people would just think it's just a thoroughfare at this point, but I think it's a great idea. Good. Good. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for your time, and um, yeah, good luck with the rest of your thank preparations. Thanks, sure sure Okay. To talk to the owl and raise our voices. There's some audio issues. Okay, they're having a hard time Out hearing. In the other lands. Okay. Talk to the bird. Talk to the talk to the bird. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to finalize the warning for the annual town meeting. Everyone probably has before them a sample warning for the town meeting. And let me just give a couple couple updates. Sorry about this, but you, you read things 88 times and sometimes you miss. Yep. Art, article 9, the third line down, it should say to specify the time of acceptance, not acceptable. And then that last sentence in Article 9 should end with a period, not a question mark. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, so for the warning language in general, we went back to the pre-COVID era. So during the COVID era when everything was Australian ballot, your warning read a lot differently. And especially with regards to the budget, it specified budgetary amounts. Um, so your warning last year read, shall the town appropriate X dollars for the general fund, X dollars for capital improvements. Um, going back to the warning language um, before COVID, um, doesn't have those specific items in the articles, but that's part of the town meeting day discussion, conversation, education. Um, the, the other piece uh, that's different, um, Article 5 and Article 6, which are about the clerk and treasurer. So the clerk and treasurer technically can be separate positions. Um, so each one is warned separately to switch to a three-year term. And that would happen, that vote would occur this year to be effective next town meeting day. Um, and then the, at the end of the warning, a um, couple items. Um, in prior years, there was an article at the very end that said to do any other business that may legally come before the board during the meeting. In speaking to the League of Cities and Towns attorneys, um, you can warn that, but it essentially doesn't mean anything because unless an item is specifically warned, you can't vote on it. And so it's a bit of an antiquated article. It's probably just there because it's been there for a long time. So we took that out. Um, and then there is the other business item, which is the discussion about town meeting day. And the advice of the, the league's attorneys was not to warn that, because if you specifically warn it, even as an advisory question, um, they weren't quite sure on the legality of this. Um, someone could say, well, we've had a conversation. The public consensus seems to be this. So let's change it from an advisory question to simply a binding question. And so that the advice was, well, if you're, if you're ready to vote on it, then warn it. If you're not ready to vote on it, then don't. Don't. And I think your advice in your email was a good one to keep it in. The, I know we were concerned that these late items may have get possible short shrift. At least it does 
in other, other business, you, you are stating that you were going to discuss it. So people may want to stay for that. But I think that's an appropriate one because you, I think you're right. I think someone could very much push for some sort of a binding. And I don't know if we're ready for, for that. Personal opinion. Any other thoughts? <coughs> So it's obvious that, you, uh, well, I mean, we talked at last meeting and we didn't know whether we were going to put it in the front of the meeting or, or the back, but it sounds like for all intents and purposes, just put it, we're putting it in the back of the meeting. You can change that right now. <clears throat> I mean, kind of per the advice of the Vermont League of Cities and Attorneys and Council. Well, I don't know that they advise whether or not to put it in the front or the back. Um, I think they... Their advice was to have it as other businesses. No, right, have it as other businesses yeah, instead right. of the part of the warning. Um, I mean, uh, uh, the rest of the board, I guess I'm asking the rest of the board members comfortable with having it at the back of the meeting. I mean, I don't, I don't care either way. It's just I've been to enough town meetings where I've seen the place evacuate <laughs> during special articles. Uh, yeah. So just wonder how much input you get at the tail end of the meeting. but. Uh, that's just from the experience that I've had at those meetings. So. I understand. Can we as can we put other business anywhere but at the end? Well, does it have to be labeled as other business? I guess it should be labeled as other business. Okay. I think it belongs at the end. Um, okay. That's traditionally where other business is in any agenda item. I, I just don't see, again, if it's an article and we're basically proposing a change, I hear exactly what you're saying, Chris. If there's that, enough people interested in it, they'll stay. Don't, it, it's always, I've seen a lot of times when there's always a hot button issue that's usually, you know, first or second on the agenda, you know, especially during the budget things, people stay and then once that's done, they're out the door. You know, yeah. they don't stay for a lot of a lot of other things once what they came for was. But I don't know if we have a lot of choice. No, I'm fine with it. I you know I wasn't looking to make make an argument out of this by any stretch. Uh, yeah. Roger. Yeah. Um, you know, I agree with Chris. I, I think it will get short shrift. On the other hand, we're not going to be voting on it. Uh, this is just to introduce the idea and let people know that this is going to be under discussion. We're going to be addressing this again uh, later in the year, uh, so uh, I think I think it's fine to just leave it where it is and just make sure that uh, people know that it's going to be under discussion. Yeah, I agree. Melissa, Danny, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I I pretty much agree with what Roger said. You know, if it were the only discussion that we were having, I think that the you know, it might might be more important to try to maximize, but because it's sort of the introduction of the conversation, you know, it seems like this is an okay place. It's an appropriate place. You know, it's hard to say we can't make a timed agenda much like we can't on our own meeting. So it's hard to tell folks like show up at this time for the conversation. So we'll hope for the best and hope that people can can be there, but also, you know, try to accommodate going forward with other opportunities for the conversation. I'm trying to remember, we don't have a, a space on the warning for, for where we like introduce the representatives and stuff for the, that just comes in a certain, we just make a break somewhere. I don't think that's part of the warning. Yeah, if you read Carla's minutes from previous in-person, she, the, the people like John Walter spoke fairly early in the meeting. Right. And, um, I don't know that you've decided yet, but should, and whether you're gonna have CB five or do, I think she, I think Linda still wants five minutes on Probably. the floor for that. Um, but if you read Carla's minutes, you'll see that. You know that those when when those things took place, right. I don't, they yeah. didn't they didn't go on a warning. But they weren't on the warning. No. I don't I don't believe no. that. No. We just probably have to figure out a place. Like an agenda. Right, exactly. <laughs> an agenda for the meeting, but they didn't. Our own about kind it. of an internal agenda from where they go. No. And I did speak to, uh, I didn't speak to Jeff, but I did reach out to Jeff and he'll be happy to attend on the 27th. I don't even know if I shared that with you. 
but he said, just let him know what time and he'll be here. Who is the moderator? Hopefully Jeff. Jeff Kilgore, hopefully. He's, <laughs> he's willing, he's willing. Yeah, we'll see if he doesn't get voted in. Does, so we, he's going to be voted in as moderator for, for this com, for this he, meeting. He'll be proposed as the candidate for voting, voting voted in as moderator. And if the if he uh, accepts, it, people and then he moderates it. that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then it's good to have some weak experience right. because that's, sometimes that's, 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 that's always the first time. Yeah. 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 But he usually comes to the in front of the board here once a year prior to select to town meeting mm -hmm. and just talks about, you know kind of what happens at town meeting and how, how the process works a little bit. Okay. So. Um, I had a question about uh, Article 17. Um, I thought at the last meeting we discussed uh, incorporating uh, the funding from, that came from the town uh, in 2022 into the regular budget and then just uh, their proposed increase uh, being warned. That was a separate article. So last year, the uh, their increase was sixty five hundred. So I believe last year the warning and correct I got it here it was, was twenty thousand. Yep. And so there's their total, and so the budget I believe has thirteen. That's not warned. Last year was they got thirty twelve. Um, twelve five. Last year the amount that was warned was twenty. So their increase is here on top of the twenty. So. Which is, I recall, our conclusion at the last meeting, because the question was, but what if they come in for an X, Y, Z percent, and will the voters be aware of that increase? So the decision was made to put it on that article. Mm -hmm. I'm checking the senior center. And Tom, will you be writing up, I know there's usually for the select board, certain thing, you know, in terms of the budget, you know, with, with the numbers, you'll, you'll be getting that to us beforehand. Yeah, so I'll have in the, in this document, the manager's report, Bill and I are each writing one, he's writing one about the past, and I'm writing one about going forward. Mm -hmm. um, Karen, I think, has both mm -hmm. of ours. Um, I and then I'll have a presentation mm -hmm. prepared, and I can review that with the board in advance. Okay. So we'll go over that at the last meeting before the uh, at the four town meeting. And I can have it ready for the thirteenth, I'm sure. Okay. If you want to do that, but it, and it really, I was, I was assuming it was a, a ten minute presentation, not not a formal PowerPoint per se. But if you want that, I can do that and then hit right. the highlights and walk people through the, the document here. Right. And usually, I know we have this. Usually, a person. Per, you know, Chris would know a certain procession of who does which article and, and stuff. So I think that's what you do with Jeff when he's here on the twenty second. With Jeff, okay. Yeah. yeah. Again, if you go if you go into the last town report and look at Carla's minutes, you'll see you know Chris made this motion, Chris made that motion. I'm giving examples. Her minutes are pretty. Just trying to get some ducks. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe Jeff Kilgore sorts that out with us. That's not part of when he's he no. offered to help. With no, that, we so I, we usually talk with the town manager and right. decide who wants to take what and. Okay, my mistake. Then. No, that was that, his offer in his email was to help yeah, with that. So. No. It'd still be useful to have him here. Yeah, at some yeah, point. yeah. Sure. Let's have him yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff's knowledge just Jeff has a lot of experience moderating the town meeting and he, he, is, he can be very helpful. Yeah. So the 13th we'll have an agenda item for town meeting day prep and we'll mm -hmm. take it from there. Usually when it become when it comes to specific budgetary items and stuff like that, even though we read the article, uh, unless you feel comfortable getting involved in the particulars of any any one article. He always used to refer to Bill because right. Usually he knew it like the back of his hand, and he, he could explain it right to the T if they're you know. So that was my main question. In that, I had looked at the Australian ballot warnings, which are much more comprehensive because they had to be and literally include the dollar amounts. But my understanding is, this is the general warning, and that will be read day of with appropriate detail. Is that It'll correct? Be a 
large dollar amount, and then there's right. a discussion where the town manager will then break down a little bit, you know, for the public. And then there's any questions, and or if there are any amendments, or you know, to the uh, to the budget. And I am not proposing this to be clear, but as a point of clarification, we cannot select any of these to be voted on by Australian ballot, right? Because we've elected to have a floor meeting. I do wish there was that mix and match flexibility, but alas. So we could do these hybrid for town meeting. I know. I will. I will say, as someone who advocated for a floor meeting, I I do. I think. For some of them, it is. I mean, it's the point we had about, I agree, the points made about the other business discussion. It is where it is to make sense on the agenda, but who will be there is a question. So one other question, uh, and it may have already been stated and went, went by me for whatever reason, but are you and Bill both going to be uh, sitting at the table with the rest of us? Just me. Just you. Okay. He'll be in the audience. Bill will be out in the audience, like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't quite sure because of how much you may or may not have been caught up on what's transpired in the past year versus. It's I'm just pretty it's well a, caught up on the past year, yeah, and I okay. think you know the the meeting's really about twenty three. So right, yeah. I no, should that, be able to answer great. any question in that budget because I can't then. It'll be a different conversation. <laughs> I think it's a good statement of our support and show for the community. Yeah. Candidly, like optics and practicality, I think it's really yeah. healthy. It's actually and I would make a bet that Bill will be there. So if we are stuck on, well, he'll Sunday. be in the front row. Come on, yeah. like, what do we think is going to happen? <laughs> no, I, trust me, I got full confidence. It's actually, in, yeah. in some respects, for me, um, useful to have an in-person town meeting because I've, I've got to know every number in that. So it's but it's the best way to learn it is to learn it. I yeah. think it's important that Tom leads because he's the town Absolutely. manager. That he leads, you know, Bill. As much as I love Bill, Bill's in the past, you know, and you know we we're moving forward. Yep. Okay. Um, in terms of, are we discussing anything else on this? Sure. I guess one. I I again understand why Article Five and Six are first in that they aren't budgetary. Do we have any concerns about, hello, it's been two years, want to change town clerk to three years? To be clear, I fully support the article and support its passage, but I'm just wondering from an agenda standpoint, I guess we have the moderator first, but is does it, I, I get, again, it feels separate to me from the budget, so I understand why it's being proposed, where it's being proposed. I just wanted to raise that. Entirely up to the board. I'd be glad. What would you uh, prefer? I don't know. I don't know. Like, do you do the reports of the town officers and claim to the town off? You know, get people warmed up with "Hello, welcome. We're at town meeting. Mm -hmm. We did a year." It, I, and again, this could be totally arbitrary. I just wanted to raise it. If, mm -hmm. and then also, I guess that's a question of is Karen speaking to us, Tom? Which we don't have to decide tonight. Who's what? Do you want to speak at town meeting to why this is being proposed? I said we don't need to figure it out tonight, but for that article in particular given that it concerns two positions you currently hold. Um, I think that makes sense, is when, but when those articles come up, I think it's easy enough to speak to them as to why we're proposing a change from a one to a three year term. I agree, Mike, I'm not disputing any of that. My only question is on the order, which again, I'm recognizing could yeah. be totally arbitrary. So if we wanna start with that conversation and the board thinks that makes sense, Happy to do so. I'm just noting it is a different type of article than the rest of our budget or other discussion suite, so to speak. You think it should be? Uh, Where would you think towards be nine? Sure. I was going to say after ten, but but uh, ten is to vote sums of money necessary for general government. So right, we're already into the budget. Yeah, but the town clerk and the treasurer issue isn't budgetary per se. Right. Not in terms. But um, every every article after our special article nine. Special article. I'm sorry. I should, yeah, they get eleven. So that's yeah, that's kind of if anything, it should be uh, either after eleven or 
And to be clear, this is this could be a, I am fully overthinking that. I just want to own it. I just wanted to just run it, get a gut check. If the rest of the board says, Alyssa, you're nuts, we should just start with it because it's different. I think that's completely fine. Yeah, I'm not, this be, is not what be. I feel strongly about. I just wanted to raise it. It could be either or. Yeah. Do we have to assess yeah. your sanity? Or? Thanks, Roger. I appreciate, I appreciate what I'm going to take as a vote of confidence. I think it's important after it's brought up in discussion to say why we're changing and we could speak you know and there's the there's the motion yeah. for a second then it goes into discussion and in discussion we i'd be glad to speak to you know what what our thoughts are why go into you know, one to a three-year term as to you know what the board kind of thinks about doing that and how it just makes expeditious and again it doesn't really change anything because if the town clerk is not or yeah. the town treasurer is not doing their job we could remove them from their position just look you know i know the whole idea behind a one-year term is like throw the rascals out you know if they're not doing their job but you could still do that in any way you know, if okay, I'm not disputing it. With respect to order, I'm hearing that yeah. the board thinks the order as proposed makes sense. So I will go with the wisdom of the board if that's. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, Alyssa, but I think I think we run, might run into it wherever it is. And so path of least resistance might just be to leave it where it's at. Thank you all. Thanks, Alyssa, for that comment. Any other possible changes? I just want to make sure um, the articles for appropriations were requests made to us, um, but you have the right to not warn them. Say that again, Tom. These are, these are not written in stone. You have the oh. right to. Um, well, they were not petitioned. They were requests. Um, so they have the right to petition. And these have been on there historically, but without, the, so the petition would get them on the warning by law. But these are ones that traditionally the select board has opted to fund. Mm -hmm. And then the history is also, and I, I don't know if this was voted on at one point, I would, Bill wasn't sure offhand. And, um, there's the informal $2,000 rule, where if it's 2,000 or more, it's a separate article, and the smaller ones are bundled. Thank you for that. Used to, used to be less. I think it used to be like 750, and then I think it got increased. But... Tom, you see that typo, the $200 for support of Mosaic? Is that is that meant to be AKA? Formally known as. Formally known as. Cool. Thank you so much. Just wanted to call attention to my. Um, again, going back to Article 17, um, my intent for that was to reduce the amount uh, to, in the article um, rather than increase it because uh, the, the town had to pass 20,000 last year and now they, they're being asked to pass 26,500 on top of what's already in the budget. And uh, I know that that uh, caused some concern for the senior center. Um, and so when we were discussing it, I'm sorry if I wasn't articulate about this, but I was thinking that the entire amount that was uh, spent uh, by the town on the senior center would go into the budget. And then what they were asking for on top of any new money, um, uh, in addition to both what was in the budget last year and the special article would be what okay, be so going on this year. That was not, I think, our understanding from the last meeting, but if you want to do that, Article 17 would simply say 6,500, because right. that's the increase in the budget would contain the rest. So if the board wants us to which would be thirty-two five, I believe, right? They have oh, I see what five you're right now. But, yeah, to... yeah, yeah. My intent is to try to keep them whole without mm -hmm. asking the voters to vote what looks like a, a, an abnormally large sum of money in the special article. Um, so point I tried to raise at the last meeting, but here we are. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, know, I apologize <laughs> for not being clear about what I was, what I was trying to say. I hear you, Roger. Uh, 
Um, so <laughs> my, my preference would be to try to move uh, that full, what is it, 32, whatever. There's 12.5 in the budget, which has been in the budget. Yeah. So at the last meeting, I said the 20 is much higher. Yeah. And so then the concern was, well, they're going to ask for an increase every year. And this was a transparent way to show it because they had 20 on the warning last year. Correct. I support the proposal, if the board wants to do it, to put 32.5 in the budget if the 20 has been passed for the past several years mm -hmm. and warn 65. That's fine. That just wasn't the conclusion at the last meeting. So forgive the exasperation. Yeah, I think the question was then, you know, are we continue like are are we putting a limit on it or are we okay to just increase the budget every year? Is it only every five years or every 10? You know, I think that the the concern and what led to this decision being made was um, you know, it, it, it is it is it always we're just going to okay what's gonna go in the budget. Um, and it was put on the article for transparency. Again, I, I agree. I think it's okay because, you know, but the voters might balk at that number. Um, but do we want to think about the longevity and the continuation of the increase within the budget? Or are we just okay with it because we need to support the senior center? I mean, it's funny because I don't, I don't see a concern in how it's being proposed now because they certainly have legitimate reasons for asking for the increase. And if there's an explanation, I think either way, the, the question might be called because if anybody's paying attention, they're gonna see that last year and previous years, it was 20,000, why all of a sudden is it only 6,500? And you know, if they're not looking at the budget too, if they're looking, you know what I'm saying? Some people might not read into the budget as in depth as we all have to. So they're going to say, why did uh, why we Senior it? Center drop mm -hmm. 14,000 off their off their books, you know, or whatever. Um, and I, for one, would completely stick up for the Senior Center because obviously we know what's behind their ask. And it's not like they're living like fat cats. I mean, they're trying to do a service that's uh, very well needed and, and uh, deserved and uh, yeah. if, if anybody's really paying attention, they're gonna see, maybe it needs to be reworded here. I don't know, maybe I'm getting a little bit uh, beyond what I need to do here, but a 20,000 with plus 6,500 increase, that's that because if you take the 20 out of there and just leave 6,500, you know, is the question going to get asked why? Uh, either way, I think it's going to, it may get asked why. So but transparency is what I'm looking for, 100% transparency. Uh, and to your point, Danny, I think what you're concerned about is as time goes on, this continues to escalate without question, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, and it wasn't so much my concern, it was just part of what we had talked about at the last meeting as a concern and not even a negative concern, just a question of like, you know, if it increases 6,500 next year, do we move 6,500 into the budget again and leave it or do, or how often do we adjust the budget? I don't think it needs to be a, a negative issue, just possibly something to keep in mind, you know, as it, can, as it may or may not continue to go up, but. I don't think that's a reason not to put it in the budget. It's just something I think we should keep in mind. I mean, you could certainly shove it over the 20,000 into the budget. And if anybody's paying attention, they're gonna say, what the heck happened here? How come it was 20,000, now it's only 65. Has so. it passed five years? So my thing, again, part of it was, I mean, I just wanna acknowledge one, we've increased to other nonprofits in the budget transparently, it's all transparent, it's all in the budget. Revitalizing Waterbury requested an increase. They have an increased amount in the budget. And if a voter asks, we can explain it. So they're requesting an increase. It's this just question of what line it's on. Um, so it had to do with when they asked for the 20,000 increase. Do we know when that is? I would propose if that's been done for five years, we put the 20 in like Roger was saying and just do that. But that's gonna take town meeting digging. Or if we're all okay, we can just make it 32.5 in the budget. It was in 2018. Right, uh, so 2019, was, sorry, so. It was in 2019 and passed, 2020, 21, 22. So if we say 20,000 has passed for four years, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, either way, I mean, I, I, and I'm not disputing any of it. I mean, you yeah, can I think do, we all do support the wish. expenditure, which it's, is great. Um, and I think we're happy to explain mm -hmm. the $6,500 increase. If, if the question comes up and you never know, if they might just say, yep, and move on. <laughs> so think about for a moment town meeting day or 2024. So the senior center in 2022 made their budget. They broke even. They did not have a director for I think most of the year. So they've asked for an increase in 23 based on the budget we saw Pretty reasonable to conclude that they're going to ask for another substantial increase in 2024. Does that change your thinking at all? I don't know that it does or doesn't. I just want to think that might be a way to approach it. It affects the way I see it because I see that number just ballooning from 26,500 up to yeah, you know 40,000, and. Asking the voters to vote a forty thousand special article seems excessive to me. And so I'd rather you know it's a very difficult thing being transparent. Like looking at another thing, you know, we're looking at giving Downstreet a hundred thousand uh, dollars, and we have them in as a special article for fifteen. I'm curious if people are going to question. Well, if you're giving them a Hundred thousand. Why they need the fifteen fifteen hundred? You know, it's, and and then the question is, do we want to keep it at where it is? It looks like everything of of two thousand dollars or over, or individually. And just stuff. for numbers, Mike, the fifteen hundred is in twelve. The hundred thousand is right. in the budget. Right. Yeah. In twelve. That's in the in the group in the group amount, but people who are Looking, I'm sure people are going to say, you know, if they're paying attention to the roundabout and just in terms of news, you know, they have seen that Downstreet is getting money. So, you know, anyone can in that grouped amount question any one of those particular line items. So it seems we need to resolve this right. senior center first because then right. you brought up another excellent point about this. Um, I would support Roger's proposal to move the 20000 into the budget line item, given that it's passed for what we assume is four, if not five years, and that we asked for 6500 if asked, put the 20000 in the budget. And I said that because uh, the reason I recall this is I said at town meeting, Bill Shop, like people have said that to me, and Bill said, oh, no one else. Um, so anyway, I support that. Um, if, but, if, if we do it when we present that, we basically should be very transparent how we're moving some of the money into, into the budget. So it's really, you know, so people can understand, you mm -hmm. know, just, you know, fighting off your question, you know, people are going to say, well, we're, you know, with 20000 why are they now at 6500 I'd be asking that question. Right. Yeah, I think it's fair to explain it anyway. Yeah, I think it's very easy to explain. You know, it's just so like it's a bill justification. Look, refer to page twenty three on your, you know, you know your town report on the budget where it has, you know, you know different different. I don't know where the uh, senior center is under is operations. under general government. Yeah. So. So. To some clear, it sounds like there's support. Article seventeen shall. Specify sixty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and the other and twenty we, is put in the budget. If if we explain that w why you. it's you know because yes people are going to say why did you group twenty you know a bunch of money mm -hmm. away from the senior center I'm sure because it's been supported for the past four years exactly. and they're feeding so many people uh, a very reasonable cost. Bottom line is it's all real money. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is everyone in concurrence that we want to have the under 2,000 items as a grouped item under Article 12? I think we are. Yeah. I like it a lot because it's a rule, and I love rules. That's why I said thank you. When Tom said under 2,000, it's here. I was like, perfect, Sorry. straightforward. Yeah. There is an explanation. Um, I guess it's a Robert's rule question, but I think your downstreet is fine. I don't think anyone will raise it, but the point you brought up for me is about 
Again, my understanding at the last meeting was that down streets $100,000 and the 76 for WASI, we're putting it all in the budget. Is that correct? Because that's the only other I would just note is that's all in the budget that isn't separate. You know, obviously when it was Australian ballot, we said $100,000 to the ICE Center or the board, which I was not on. So that was the that was a question for WASI. Um, so we may need to amend that. That's a good thought we had warning language for WASI. I thought there was a decision to warn WASI because some of that vote depended on the other towns. I believe that was the agreement right. when Maggie Burke came to present. You, you, I think, sent me emailed language saying, you know, we approved putting a warning of seventy-six thousand dollars on. Um, so uh, I, that was the question. So the question so, is, is it in the budget or is it in article? Um, you have to add an article. Okay. So if it so needs to be an article, we'll need to add that. And I would propose before the other smaller ones, given its significance. So that would be Article Twelve. Yeah, I, that's an important. Um, that's where someone's going to ask questions. No one should be up. Right, and Downstreet isn't below seventy-two, right? Those are the well, that was my question. Downstreet was Downstreet is in the budget. The one hundred thousand dollars. Downstreet is in the budget. E flood is in the budget. Right. But Wasi, so we're we're putting Wasi on the article on the basis of our previous Do you have the meeting Wasi minutes. Language in front yes, of you? like uh, I have it on my desktop. In the yeah. difference being, in the difference well, being that um, no, other to towns have to vote on Wasi, right? I think we agree based on Duxbury and Morthtown passing it. Is that was that the reason? Uh, yeah, one would be twenty, one would be another four. Yeah. What's the discussion now? Sorry. So there was an earlier select board um, decision. Before, I don't know exactly when, but before my time. Um, to warn WASI receiving yeah, $76,000. Yeah. So Karen has language for that that she's going to okay. have for you right now. Yep. And similarly, we'll just explain that every other, so a point of explanation would be that other ARPA expenditures are embedded in the budget with the exception of WASI because of the other towns, which is also a rule. We love rules. What are the dates of the municipalities for them deciding? Same day, I believe. We don't. We don't have any, they can warn it, they can just spend it in their budget. That's Put it in their book, right, okay. So we don't know. Yes, somebody got their hand up, Mike. Oh good, and we can find out who it is. TG, could you announce who you are? Good evening, this is actually Cheryl Glore. It's got my husband's initials. So do I understand correctly that the um, money, the $100,000 that Downstreet's asking for will not be a separate item at town meeting. It's gonna be rolled into the budget on whether the townspeople vote yay or nay on the budget. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, that's, okay. All right, that's unfortunate. All right, well, thank you. Just wanted to be clear. It was kind of already voted for in the, in the EFUD vote. So. Um, can, can you just say your name again for the minutes? I'm sorry. But you put separately from, from the select board, correct? Uh, it's Cheryl. I know, I'm, uh, yeah, sorry. Well, I didn't get the last name for the minutes. It's okay. And Cheryl. Thank, thank the, you, Cheryl. Cheryl, the $100,000 for downstreet housing is ARPA funds, which are funds we receive from the federal government. Um, and so they don't impact the tax rate. No, no, I understand that. But as a taxpayer, I really wanted the ARBA funds to go to the infrastructure that we currently have and where we need it to be. I was hoping it would be a separate item on the ballot so that the voters could have the opportunity to actually say yay or nay on how those funds were used. Also based on the survey that was put out by the select board and by the percentages that came back, um, there's other infrastructure projects that took priority or were, were asked for priority over those funds going somewhere else. So I, I understand it. I, I sat in the last meeting, I missed the last meeting on how you're going to set up the, the vote on that. But um, I, I just wanted to make sure I was understanding everything correctly. So thank you. So Cheryl, just for a little more information, um, Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how people look at it, part of our town plan 
requires us to uh, do what we can to, <laughs> and th it's funny things how, how things have changed over the years, but do what we can to uh, promote and uh, uh, guide and, and help implement affordable housing into our town. Um, it's similar but yet different than in another issue that we had years ago uh, with the cell tower up on Shootsville Hill. Um, I personally uh, fought that battle simply because it was in the town plan that no cell tower would be put in uh, critical wildlife habitat. If it hadn't been there, uh, we probably wouldn't have. We probably wouldn't have won the case. Number one. Number two. Um, probably wouldn't have been uh, the support that there was from the select board to to uh, oppose that that proposal. So a lot of a lot of things that happen here from the select board level has to reflect what the voters voted in, which was uh, articles or items in our town plan. So uh, I think that's part of the reason, you know, the town select board voted in favor of, of uh, proposing this 100,000. And trust me, I 100% uh, get your point about uh, the ARPA money. Um, but if you think about it from that perspective, I guess you could call affordable housing to some degree infrastructure. Uh, well, August. I think, uh, Cheryl, the other point might be that uh, we d are using a great majority of the ARPA funding for infrastructure, uh, particularly to renovate uh, two bridges, uh, which, uh, Tom, uh, how much is that going to be? It's over $500,000. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Joe. So just to clarify, clarify that. Oh, I appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Other issues. Okay. Yeah. That was And did you, you want me to email one to you? Yeah, though, if you have it accessible. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's Probably better than somebody reading it out loud right now. <laughs> I'll read it while she sends it. Shall the town of Waterbury, art, so new Article 12 on my new draft, um, shall the town of Waterbury appropriate $76,000 to WASI towards its new facility conditioned on the appropriation to WASI for the same purpose of $20,000 and $4,000 respectively by the town of Duxbury and the town of Moortown. And it probably should say in the warning, at least on the first time, Waterbury Ambulance Service Incorporated. That is, versus I would agree with that. Because some people won't know what WASI is. Aaron, just had a correction. Um, oh, yeah. Where, you know, it mentions WASI the first time, we should probably spell it out for the first time, say Waterbury Area uh, Ambulance Service Incorporated. We can do that. Yeah. We're going to the... need one more to print. Oh, I'm sure there will be so, other. Yeah. yeah. Do you this... want WASI in parentheses or something? Yeah, or I would say after that? that so you don't have to do it the second time. You can... Yeah. Okay. It's Waterbury Area. I don't think it's area. It, that would Waterbury, make two ways. Though. Waterbury Ambulance Service Incorporated. Uh, yeah, there we go. Service. And just to say out loud, what I just showed Tom was our minutes from July 18th, which had the motion made by our clap was to appropriate 76,000 subject to approval by Waterbury voters at town meeting. Conditional on the duck spray, all the stuff that's in there.
then a couple items I wanted to raise, um, and they're not in here, but I, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so I've had a couple of these conversations with different members, um, and they've just been conversations here and there. So one or two people have suggested to me that you should consider articles for Front Porch Farm, given the town uses it um, various times. And a couple people have suggested you should consider, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking embedded with Article 13 with all the others. And a couple people have suggested you should consider the same for Waterbury Roundabout. So I just want to make sure there's support for that. You have the conversation. If there's not, that's fine. Neither of them have petitioned, so we can't that's correct. do it for this year. We could consider putting something in the budget, but we can't have a special article. We can put whatever special article we want, can't no, we? No, if you, if, you, if you don't petition, if you don't have your signatures, you, you can't get on them. Right, I mean, was it Bill last week that said that Leap want, was considering wanting more money, but then he was told he had to petition for it? Right. And he said to hell with it? <laughs> right. And the petition has to have a certain number of signatures, right? Yeah. And there would be that. But I guess the bigger question, where did either ask? It was just raised. I don't disagree, but. As much as I'm probably supportive of both, I don't think we could have a special article. Whether we want to put some money in the, bud the raw budget, mm -hmm. it's kind of what's the board's pleasure. How would we find a figure for that? Have they asked to have? No, it's just come up. Just come up in conversation. Yeah, who's that? Um, a couple people have oh. conversationally just said to me, maybe these would be worthy of some future consideration. They've mentioned even given an inkling as, as to how much? Okay, 100 bucks. Oh, okay, that's a, a Dan minor. Danny, can you hear everything okay? Okay. Since, since Lisa's is here, do you want to address the board? Do you want to address the board about possible? And it wasn't Lisa asking me. Yeah, I have not. I have not. She has not. No. Um, no. Um, want to come forward? Um, I talk to the owl. Welcome to the bird. Welcome to the bird. Um, Lisa Scalotti from Waterbury Roundabout. Um, I have not petitioned and I have not considered um, a request. Um, for the record, Waterbury Roundabout is a nonprofit. It's a Vermont nonprofit. It has not filed for IRS 501c3 status, although we have a fiscal sponsor from the Vermont Diggers, uh, Vermont Journalism Trust as our fiscal sponsor. So that's our 501c3 conduit to support us. Um, Front Porch Forum is a for-profit business. For the record, um, so I'm not sure how many for-profit businesses you're just giving money to um, as a donation. So that's a consideration. Um, frankly, you know, had the law been changed last year, as there was a proposal in the legislature to allow for notices um, for boards like yours and school boards to decide where to put their public notices, I would much prefer, um, you know, municipalities and schools to be have the choice. You know, I think that's a local issue that I would love to see, you know, revised in our state where, you know, select boards and school boards could decide where are people looking for information, you know. They decide, there was a proposal to have um, online newspapers be an option for boards to put their public notices. Because right now the law is done in a way where you have to put them in a print newspaper. Um, you know, and that's to try to, it's important income for print newspapers and I get that. Um, I didn't weigh in on that debate last year because I was both an online news site and I had a print paper going on, so I had a foot in both camps. And both the, the, the Times Argus folks and the Vermont Digger folks wanted me to support both of their positions on that, so I stayed out of it. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, if for, for newspapers, local newspapers to survive, I think that's important for them to have that advertising. I wish towns and schools were able to look and see what they have in their community. So if you have a print newspaper, support it. But if you have an online paper that's covering you, you should be able to support that too. Um, and so unfortunately, you're, you're required to put it in the Times Argus, even though a lot of people are probably not looking in the Times Argus to find out what the select board or the school board is doing on a regular basis. Um, but you have the option. I would, and so my bottom line is I would rather, 
it not be like a, like a handout and a donation that we receive from a school board or from a, a select board. Um, I think the sort of the fairer, more transparent and above board way of, of doing that would be for over the course of the year when you have, we've already started doing this, when you've got jobs to post that you, you know, place an employment ad on our website. Um, to just have it just be a regular way to support us as a business, whether we're a nonprofit, you know, we're a nonprofit, but we're still a business. Um, and so, you know, if you've got jobs that you want to advertise, consider um, putting them on our website as well as you would put them on front porch form or you would put it in seven days or wherever else you might advertise to get um, candidates for jobs. Um, if there's important public notices, there have been a few of those already. Um, you know, maybe the town meeting warning, things when there's a, a, an important public hearing, sure, you've got to put those in the print paper, but if the spirit of this is to have the public actually notice what's happening, <laughs> it should be in a place where the public is looking, you know? And so that's another opportunity. Um, we're not charging a lot for those. <laughs> our, our, our job ads are, are relatively inexpensive. We've just been charging $50 a month to, to post something for a job. So it's a pretty inexpensive way to have an, another place where people would see it. So I feel like that's a more sort of above board way of doing it than to feel like you've given us a donation and you know somehow that, that makes you a donor. And, and the, journalistically, I sort of feel better about it just being a you know, we're buying an ad instead of, you know, we've given you this contribution and, you know, so that's, that's a little awkward, I suppose. So I, that's why I didn't, I didn't make a request and I, I, I didn't expect to. So kudos. I appreciate, kudos. We appreciate, I, I appreciate you that thinking of that and I, and I, I appreciate you supporting it and reading it and telling your friends to read it and, you know, and that sort of thing. I'm trying to, you know, be as useful as, you know, and, and keep it free so everybody can look at it and everybody can use it. And it's nice to see how much traffic it gets and how many people are using it. Um, so that would be, if, if you want to show us support, that would be the way to do it. And it would be like a much more sort of clear cut way to do it as a, as a business transaction and not a contribution. So thank you very much. Request to a rotary for a moment? Um, not specifically, no. Although I was told the voter the same thing, you know. I don't. You know, I would be happy to. You, you could put sponsor spots in our newsletter. You could put ads on our website, and that's. What, and we're we're hoping to be able to do that with it the whole community. Be that, that Everybody can be doing that, you know. So to see it as a place, we would love to be. You know, Seven Days has all the employment ads in Vermont. We'd like to be like the little Seven Days in Waterbury and Stowe and wherever, and in, in our little community here, where people, you know, kind of look there for job ads too. So. One thing at a time, I suppose. We're, we're getting there. But um, yeah, so that's, I think that's probably the, the better way for businesses. And, you know, because we've, we've got the capacity, we've got a website, we have a lot of traffic on it. A lot of people are looking at that website. We've populated it with Google ads, which are very generic ads right now. We'd love to swap those out with ads with local companies and, you know, towns looking for mechanics and <laughs> things like that. So. Anyhow, I appreciate you thinking just, about us. Just want to ask you, and this yeah. is just, I know it's probably, it will be an antidotal answer. Do you think more people are getting their town news from your e-blast e versus front porch forum? Well, I, I think there's people looking in both places, but the I information know. is different. different. Know yeah, different. you know, you're not getting news articles on front porch forum. You're getting right. people making announcements and telling people things in between. I've got, you know, studded snow tires to get rid of, and right. I'm having a yard sale, and I need a babysitter, and right. <laughs> you and, know, they're not talking about the town budget and stuff like no, that. No, and and the town, and I see front porch forum is more of a place like a meeting place where people have conversations with each other. You know, and just because my neighbor posts something on Front Porch Forum, I don't know if they have all their facts right. They're not reporters. They're not checking things. And so I'm hoping that, you know, that that's a, seems like a different lane. It's not necessarily journalism. And what we're trying to do is journalism. So Thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. It's yeah. almost an invisible coffee talk, right? Yeah. You can sit there and have your coffee, review Front Porch Forum, communicate with your neighbors without actually looking at them. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's just in its name, right? You know, you're just like you're, you're on your front porch and you're you're yelling over to your neighbor on their front porch or across the fence it's or like one of those. the morning coffee at Billings Mobile. Yeah. Exactly. So, anything else? Thank you no, very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for Lisa. asking. Yes. I think that kind of answers that question. 
Yeah. I would say I was not inclined to support, though I value the service Front Porch Forum provides. They do their own fundraising drives, which individuals right. can contribute to that, as they can to Lisa. I didn't realize that they're for profit, too. That's they're a public benefit corporation, which is a specific set, right. section of Vermont statute. But yes, that is correct. Um, I would say, I'd, what was based on what was just discussed, I would propose uh, the board encourage staff to the extent feasible to utilize the job postings um, and advertising on the roundabout um, with the appropriate fees, which to their credit, I think they've already been doing. I think I saw a laborer job there a couple weeks ago. So right. that would be, I wouldn't, that's what I would propose in terms of. Yep. You can do that. Um, I just want to go back to Article 12 for one second. Okay. So that language, I think, was drafted in summer. Uh, it was, I inherited it. Yeah. So for Article 12, that the $76,000 is ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the article should specify that? It does not have to. That was the intent of the board. Um, shall appropriate, I would support this, $76,000 of American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funding to WASI. Because to me, that's a very different yep. ask of voters yep. than just yeah, the that's money. Been a good oh. pickup. I'm also just going to say I've hold last minute's meetings. What's in our approved minutes from last meeting is that we were putting the 100,000 from Downstreet on the warning. So I don't care. We just should amend the minutes. I was just going to say that because I told Karen I was looking at something and I originally wrote on budget for Downstreet and then I looked back at my notes and it says warning. So I gave Karen the wrong wrong info and I elicited uh, I mean, the wrong as well, right? <laughs> um, and I mean, it has the same thing though about the senior center and the 12-5 and that 26-5 is a special article. So to be clear, I don't think we're bound to that. I'm just acknowledging that's what was in the minutes we approved. So what's your pleasure on the downstream? Should we put that as article 11 or, thir or 13? You know, up front, like we're doing WASI. And then while we're down street, do you want to do the same for the other ARPA funds? So the, way the ones out. that were in the budget were bridges, uh, gravel, bridges, roads, and stuff like and that. And Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Bridges, road, and EFUD, but those are. In my opinion, municipal entities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Downstreet is not. The reappraisal piece, too. Washington is not. That's the difference. Where I, I think they, those two both, we can't, shouldn't treat either one of them differently. Right. So, should we, uh, I won't say honor Cheryl's request. <laughs> to see that money put on a special article. I think we should. Fair we, enough. We talked about it at last, Fair enough. last meeting. Um, then the question comes, you know, I know some of these dollar amounts are usually sure. mm -hmm. a blank mm -hmm. and someone adds that dollar amount in or, or do we just want to put it right in the warning? Say that you again. Know, you know how a lot of times, like with the budget, it, it will have kind of a certain amount, you know, and someone makes a motion for the budget of 6,400. You mean like for Article 9 t right. and 10? Okay, let's settle the downstreet issue first yep. and then get to I'm that because they're I'm different. I'm equating that to that. Agree, and that was the difference between the Australian ballot language, which I called like flowery and kind of like, because it said, we shall do these things for the general inhabitants of the town. And I didn't know if you that know, was someone and gave dollar amounts. I got to say something. I, I've been biting my tongue for a while on this. Uh, you know, the downstreet project was voted on by ratepayers of the sewer and water system. The people of the so-called town, if you still think that, like some people do, that there's a town and a village, they didn't get the vote on that. And that was a rub for me. But then we're asked to give money to 
down street as a town and we were asked as a town to appropriate money to EFUD for reasons that I won't get into tonight. Uh, and I'll just put it this way. Merger is only convenient when it's convenient. And I'll leave it at that. There's a history behind all of it. Any, any other comments on Chris's? I think the question at hand is if it's its own article or not. My thing has always been consistency. So yeah. I was okay with WASI being the only one because of the minutes. And if we want it to be private, non-municipal organizations, that's fine with me too. I think we don't need to relitigate. We, I mean, by virtue of being in the budget or its own article, it will go to voters, but I'm open to having it be its own article, if that's yeah. our pleasure. Let me read some proposed language for the revised WASI language and then for a new downstreet article. So for WASI, adding to the article using essentially some identical language from last year, it would read, shall a ton of water very appropriate $76,000 to WASI, spelled out, at no cost to the property taxpayer using American Rescue Plan Act funds provided by the U.S. federal government conditioned on the appropriation to WASI of the other towns. And then downstreet, the article would read, shall the town of Waterbury appropriate $100,000 to downstreet housing, uh, using their formal name, to allow for the development of affordable housing at 51 South Main Street at no cost to the property taxpayer using ARPA funds provided by the U.S. Treasury. Does that, for the development of affordable housing, 51 South Main Street, spell it out clear enough, do you think? Mm -hmm. In regards to your comment, Chris, I just want to comment on that directly. Um, I, I understand your concern, but I did see that the voters of the, voters of the town at one point, EFUD owned, owned that property, so they had a little bit more control. So they were, they had a vote to approve that and then we decided to use the 100K of ARPA funds. They voted to approve to approve the, the sale, sale of the property. Right. And I know there was nothing that had a binding amount of how much and stuff. But it's what took place after that that I understand. That you know Again, I don't want to get into the weeds on this because it's a toxic issue. Um, we'll go on and on and on. Mer mer yeah, I've already, I think merger should have been all in, period. Right. Plain and simple. I think in the present moment, it, you know, we there's so much history and there's a lot to deal with going forward. Obviously, like it's not, things aren't just sealed up in a bow. But for me, what I'm trying to focus on right now is you know, what's already happened has happened and what can we do going forward? And part of what we need to do as a town is support our residents and some of our residents don't have a place to live. And some of the people working here truly don't have anywhere to live or are leaving town or can't afford it. And we have this ARPA funding and part of what we as a town have pledged to do is help, help implement or guide, as Chris said, housing for our residents and for people who want to live in Waterbury. So that's what this vote is. It's up to the voters. We're not dictating a spending of money, but we're asking the voters if they also want to uphold that pledge to help Waterbury folks have safe and affordable housing. So that's the present moment and that's what we're doing. So that's what's helping me really help, you know, guide and stay present in this decision. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, and then I want to apologize because my notes are messy and I'm trying to follow the best I can. So I apologize if this is re repetitive, but um, the only things for ARPA funding in this budget are the bridges, the gravel roads we in the reappraisal. And then I was confused on EFUD because I, in my notes, I, I am mixed up whether that's um, in the budget or not. That is, that is in the budget. In the budget, okay, thank you. Yeah. 
And I will just say the rationale given was that as a special article, it might not pass on its own. Right. I remembered the conversation, but I didn't write the complete decision. Oh, totally. Head. And so I'm thank you. more framing that in terms of other items where it's a lot. I think it's a bigger ask of voters to vote down a full town budget than a special article. And I'm just naming that. I'm the one who said consistency, so I stand by that. But that's the downside to having things not in the budget. So is it a consensus that we're moving forward with the $100,000 for Down Street to be a special article? Yes. I would say yes. Is everyone in agreement with that? Roger, you're kind of... Uh, <laughs> I'm not thrilled with it, but I'm not going to oppose it. I'm in the same. I'm in the same camp as Roger. I think it's fully transparent, helpful, consistent, consistent with our values to leave it in the budget, but I'm okay with it being off. Again, it's part of our municipal plan. So that's, you know, yeah. I, uh, that's what the voters wanted. That, and, and people have said in the surveys, you know, housing was an issue. So yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a big response in the surveys. We're, well. we're being consistent to that. Yep. Yeah. So it sounds like a special article. Karen, Karen, I'll finish that. Karen will finish that in just a minute. So e right? hmm? right? Oh, it's fine. It, it Do we have to bring up every, uh, so every piece of ARPA funding now? It's yeah, already been decided. We do not. I, I had thought this was all decided. In the it was decided at the last meeting. It's in the minutes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. I thought, oh, I it, thought was it was your ask to change it. I think where it got confused, and I didn't read the minutes in detail before, but the talking to Karen, there was a lot of conversation about each one, and at the end, I thought the decision was to put them all in after the EFUD conversation. Put them so, all into the budget. Into the budget. I don't know. <laughs> Boy. Right, we were only taking out WASI because of the original. Agreement. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be more consistent here. Um, it's everyone's pleasure. First, I've seen the real spending. Ah, uh, disappointed that we got this confused. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. Go back to square one, then I guess, and move forward. Put it in the budget. For you five? So or for all of them. So you're saying just keep Wasi in, keep Downstreet and EFUD in the budget. I mean, do you think Wasi mm -hmm. can go in the budget? That's the question. If if we do all budget, I don't that think is the cleanest, Wasi those... needs to go in the budget. Uh -huh. I think people are fully aware of Wasi's uh, importance in this community, and that'll fly through. Plus the fact that plus the fact that because is yes the other municipalities. Other that's we I had six hundred thousand for EFUD that was dependent on EFUD voters voting yes, and they didn't. So yeah. <laughs> there was a six hundred thousand dollar line. In the interest of paper, I did not reprint the entire document. Thank you, Karen. Just that one piece that we made adjustments so, to. Oh, the to issue the with putting Wasi in the budget is if the budget is approved. You have, I would argue, a legal obligation to pay Wasi the seventy-six thousand dollars, even if Duxbury and Moortown don't approve. Okay. So you can assess that risk and decide to put Wasi in the budget, or you can say, we support Wasi no matter what the other towns do. Well, that, that would have been, yeah. I guess I, I thought there was a legal issue. The legal issue is just about the other towns. So yeah. In essence, because we made it dependent on the other towns, and, and that was done specifically to try to leverage more money from the other towns. But, uh, are we concerned about the other towns? Uh, do, or do we think it's possible that they're not going to? No. No, I think that I don't. If it's not, then let the 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 number is way smaller. And I don't think that they're going to be opposed. I think okay. ambulance services are going to be just something that people are going to vote for because it's an absolutely needed function in the community. Necessary evil. Not necessarily evil, it's needed. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Gotta go to the hospital. Get the 
you, you don't want to go into Chevrolet. This shouldn't be this difficult. All right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a little bit mixed now in terms of, I know, have it, I, I like the, uh, I'm a big believer in transparency and by having separate things, I think there was, for Down Street, there was pretty unanimous support. There was unanimous support in the survey about affordable housing. <coughs> I'm necessary, I think the E5 question is probably a, a stickier one, but what's your, what's every, Roger? Okay, my preference in terms of consistency uh, would be to put them all in the budget and that we have a separate explanation, uh, perhaps uh, given by Tom, on how the ARPA funding uh, is being allocated, what's being left for 2024, uh, and that, uh, that all of this is in response to the survey <coughs> that we took some time and effort to, to do to get the, the will of the people and that this reflects that to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. That's cleanest. Any other opinions? What if they pull down the whole budget? Good luck. I think we can make a compelling case. <laughs> so are we all unanimous to put all three in, in the warning? I, that's what I'm keeping, at least I'm really hearing. Saying. Well, uh, and I guess from my perspective, it's not just these three, it's the roads, it's the bridges, it's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of ARPA funding that's going to infrastructure as well. But I find those a little different because they're town. That's right. Issue. Yeah, there is a difference. There is a difference. Un unfortunately, you know, we have to you know, state the fact that there is a difference. Unfortunately, everything in ARPA is not, you know, it's. It, we're not a dictatorship, but it's also, you know, some things they vote us in to make and make decisions. Right. So what about uh, CB fiber? That is that. That's a done deal. That's already done. Yeah, we already it's that in the was budget. Right. <laughs> okay. That's a good example, Chris. I like Rogers. I'm okay if 76 yeah. goes um, to Wasi. Does, does anyone have any objections to Roger's statement? Hearing none, that's what we're going to do. Well, with apologies to staff. I want to be clear. So Article 12, where we, WASI received $76,000 of ARPA funds, depending on the two towns, that's now in the budget. So there's no Article that's 12. That's Roger's proposal, yes. And mm -hmm. Article 13 for Downstreet is now in the budget. So there's no Article 13. Correct. Okay, so we don't know. <laughs> I wasn't following uh, that either. <laughs> I think they're talking about EFA, but, uh, but I think you made a good point. If he explains mm -hmm. those um, budget numbers and how they came about and where that money came from, then. Mm -hmm. All right, so people could always amend things in the budget, should they wish. This is true. So Article 12 and 13? Out. Out. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Deleting is way faster. Yeah, deleting doesn't take as much time. <laughs> What's that? Deleting is you, way you, faster. Oh, you, you need to create another one. We do. We need a signed version tonight. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I mean, I'll go up to lead 12 and 13. Are there anything, is there anything else we're changing Tom, before I go back out? You were running through a couple of things earlier. Was it just Wasi? We're all good grouping under $2,000. Which ironically brings us back to draft one, which did not have Wasi or downstreet. <laughs> um, with the exception of 17, have we changed 17? Oh, right, where we got rid of the 20. Correct. Do we have a final? No. Yeah. That, is that all the changes? There's no more I questions. I think so. No more. Okay. I think there's a 
period missing on one of oh, these, but that. okay, okay, good. Okay, good. I the period. <laughs> so we'll have a final yeah. review once it's printed. Yeah. Right. So this time I'll print. Oh yeah, and did you get the nut changes on nine from Tom? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I won't take all the old ones. I'll just come back to the new. Also, for the record, the Hardwood Highlander boys ba varsity basketball <clears throat> team won against the Lamoille Lancers tonight. Is that a rivalry for the edges? No, it's a victory. <laughs> they <laughs> sorely needed. <it. laughs> Is your son on the team? He is a co-captain of the team. Sorry we're dragging you away, aw. Well, we should get another Zoom in the corner. Yeah. And while Karen's doing that, I can just quickly review the final sure. Thank you, Tom. budget as it stands today. We've made a... One change. <laughs> just one. Right, one change. <laughs> None of the changes you talked about tonight will impact the tax rate. Yeah. So since we presented departmental budgets, you know, and going back and you know, you change money here, money there. So the significant, and then we, at, during that time, we, you don't have final 2020 new numbers till the auditors audit them, but we, we have, we think, pretty good numbers for 2022. Um, Q invoices might poke in, the auditors might have some adjustments. Um, so the tax rate I presented as a draft mm -hmm. in early January was 0. 0.5411. Yeah. Where I'm at today is 0.5439, so it's higher, but it's the third decimal place. And a couple big changes that drove that, I, I don't want to say big because I don't know that where the third decimal place is all that big. Um, so the first is the tax rate is estimated based on your grand list. Right. Last year's grand list was overestimated when the tax rate was set. And last year, when the budget was voted on at Australian ballot, the tax rate was voted on. Mm -hmm. So in 20 Based on the overflated grand list. And, and it wasn't, it was. Right, but I'm just saying that, I'm just clarifying, right? Yep, so in 2022, we were uh, short on taxes by about 36,000. So I've adjusted the, the grand list estimate downward a little bit to try to be a little more conservative there. And then the other, one of the other big changes that impacted it was um, last year the voters approved $50,000 for the park study. Mm -hmm. And the initial budgets I drafted for you didn't have any expense in there. So the revenue of the 50000 approved by the voters was part of taxes last year. We still have about twenty thousand dollars to spend on that study. Oh, yeah. We'll spend in twenty three, so sort of an accounting issue, but you got to have the expense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also um, made other that we consider minor adjustments here and there. Um, so I think there's really nothing material in that regard. Those are those are just things that influence the rate. So we're not talking a penny change. We're talking you know, quarter penny ish of a change. Mm -hmm. um, and then the grand list, of course, isn't finalized until April. Um, so there's always a little bit of a risk if you set your tax rate via Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. Question? Yes. So with respect to our friend, the warning that we're not going back and forth, Article 10 on whatever version I'm reading says to vote sums of money necessary for general government highway and library expenses with the same to be expressed in either specific dollar amounts or as a set or as a rate or tax on the grand list. Um, I assume that language will be more specific when we review it, but are you going to recommend a dollar amount? Are you going to recommend that at town meeting we get approval for a tax rate or for an overall dollar? I can I can give both with cert with certainty at that point, but but are you going to recommend one or the other? Tell me. I guess you don't need to know now. I was just curious, given that we clearly asked for approval for a tax rate in the past that you said left us short. By the time March rolls around, um, Dan will have a really really firm number on the grand list. There's always the potential for some challenges, um, but challenges that would um, impact the tax rate would really have to exceed seven figures at that point. And we probably know about those already just in conversation. The, the big issue in finalizing the grand list, unless you've got some um, some real challenge where you know a $20 million property is challenging, a, you know, a, a ski resort or something is making a big challenge. The big issue is construction and progress. So the 
tries to visit all those properties, but you're, you're billed based on your percent complete. And that's as of April 1st. So mm -hmm. we'll do a lot of spring visits to try to capture all those numbers. And there's always a fair amount of construction in progress. Yeah. And so the, this, this would appear different in the town report just based on some of the actions in the ARPA funds tonight. But I, all the base revenues and expenses that are not ARPA impacted should be set at this point. Um, and I just want to talk briefly about um, going forward. Um, so there was a, a League of Cities and Towns as a weekly legislative update and uh, conversationally they're telling us that the state, some of the states, um, I don't want to use ARPA funds, I'm not sure it's ARPA, but it's Federal Stimulus, ARPA, Build Back Better, um, mm -hmm. that the state um, is looking to invest in bridges, and that would mean that some of the bridges in the state transportation plan that we normally have a 5% cost could, in theory, go to zero. So the Stowe Street Bridge, which we're planning on spending that 5%, which is 175000 in 2024, could go to zero. The bridge right down the road, which would be a good cost, could be paid for by the state. So that doesn't necessarily impact town bridges the state wouldn't pay for normally, but projects in their pipeline could help us going forward. So that's pretty good news for the future, I think. Um, Is this one down here a state uh, or a uh, town? It's ours, but we're but it's on the state plan for some funding in the future. So we're hopeful that, that they'll pick it up. They'll pick it up. Um, That'd be nice. Going forward, and I'll I'll have something for you, not for a while, but eventually. So the fire contract, uh, which is uh, Duxbury, it's about $110,000, $115,000 a year. It's based on the Grand West, and, and Dan Sweet's also their lister, so he went actually and captured the, all the properties within that area. And it's essentially our fire cost, and then um, based on their Grand West number and our Grand West number, and you take the percentage. Um, so it's a pretty fair contract overall, but um, it goes down about a half percent a year because right. our grand we list is growing so faster. Right. We've got, we're, we're just growing faster. Um, and it's not about the, the assessment and the common level appraisal, it's just we've got pure growth. Um, so it's not a big thing, but you know, a, a half percent of 800 grand is still $4,000. So for the long term, um, I'm probably gonna just seek to enter into what I think is a more fair agreement, which is a fixed fixed cost with a with an inflator built in, because otherwise we just our own so, growth is hurting us. Our own growth is hurting us. Yeah, I, I think that's fair to do with them. I think that's the intent of the contract. That's why I'm not discussing it in an executive session, not proposing a change at this point. I just think it's something to consider for the long term. And you know, in, in five years, it could be it's, it's still going to grow because our fire budget is growing, but it's going to grow a bit less than it should. I think. Um, just something I think we need to tackle. And then the other piece for the long term is, and maybe this is 2023, maybe it's 2024, but um, I think we're likely to lose, we're down a public works position. We've had no luck filling mechanic. We came uh, mm -hmm. close to someone who then got offered a big raise to stay where he was, um, good for him. Um, but one applicant, um, we're, a little concerned about the summer and some of the mowing works and parks and cemetery maintenance, but we're also just starting to think about maybe long term, we just don't fill that position. Um, we know we're going to need a better paid crew. We have a little more budgetary room in the future to do that if we're down one. And in talking to Bill Woodruff, that's not uncommon for this town to, to go down that position. We've been in the position for years and years. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily a, a massive operating concern for him for the winter, it's more the summer. Um, so that may be something as the year goes on, um, we just start to consider for the long term. So all those things will impact, I think, 2024 in some way. So is there consideration for a part-time position for the summer? Yeah. Even, even 
and I'm just throwing this out here because it just made my wheels start to spin. Say you had a subcontractor that was in the mowing business or whatever, and he had a guy that he could spare for the summer, sub him out to the town of Waterbury. We just pay him a lump fee and he provides whatever he provides for that person and we get the service, something mm -hmm. to consider. Yeah. So uh, as a, on a contract basis or a higher? Either one, I think. Okay. Just yeah, a different line in the way. budget we pay doesn't on. Matter. Yeah. Work's gotta get done. Um, going back to the issue of um, the other town's con contributions, do you think they're gonna squawk at the ch your change in possible payment structure? They'll have a new chair in March and I don't think I'm proposing anything that's going to impact anyone in a big way in the short term. But in the long term, um, our growth and you know our growth on the Stowe corridor shouldn't impact our cost to provide fire services right. to a neighboring town. So it's a logical argument. I just want to, I think, have a slightly it's a slight change in mechanics, really. It's not a major change going forward. And that contract has essentially increased always anyway. I just think it should be increasing a little more. Well, typically, if I remember correctly, the contract calculated out to X and Bill always rounded down mm -hmm. to the neighboring towns. So we were getting clipped a little bit every year where. anyway. So in all fairness, uh, we should be going back the other way a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like your thinking about it really shouldn't be yeah. calculated based on, on Waterbury's growth. Just because we get proportionally bigger doesn't mean that the cost to serving uh, fire protection to uh, duck spray goes down. Right. I mean, um, just because we're providing, I mean, we're providing them with a, a full-blown service, service essentially that they don't have to provide right and in itself the mechanics of make what makes that happen i think is worth more than what they're actually paying us oh, absolutely. you know what i mean to, to keep the volunteer help and to train them and do everything and organize them and yeah, there are a you lot know, of different components money. to their oh. budget. I don't know if all that's considered. Probably it is, right. but I don't know. So I think they're getting a bargain, right. you know. And then the other comment I just want to make for 2024, and it's a general comment. Um, general government town operations, I don't see at this point as being a, a, a big budget driver um, or any real budget driver in 2024. Um, the salary numbers this year still have some some payouts for Bill's time, and that goes away. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll have some turnover in planning and planning development, but I don't think that's going to drive the budget in any real way. Um, highway might, depending on the staffing issues, depending on the contractor issues for the parks and the cemeteries. Um, but I think that the big budget driver is going to be um, the capital funds and, and how much we want to into those funds for those projects. Level funding pavement is, is okay for a bit, but you know, what's construction inflation right now? You know, higher than the general rate of inflation. So if we increase paving 10%, that's 40 grand. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll know more as the state rolls out some of their projects, but, but nothing in this budget um, makes 2024 more difficult. I just wanna make that point. Did uh, VLCT talk at all about, uh, uh, you mentioned that the Build Back Butter uh, funding was coming down uh, for bridges. Uh, would there be any other fund? I mean, that's a huge uh, <coughs> appropriation, uh, federal appropriation. Is there any there's, other there's, funding coming through on that? Yeah, there's a lot out there. There's a lot in there's governor's budget, but folks generally haven't had enough time to digest it and see how that translates down to the town level. Okay. The abbreviated VLCT guide, I think, was 120 pages instead of 500. They eliminated the ones for like urban areas that wouldn't be eligible, and the remaining programs is like 120 pages. I'll check my math, but it's ridiculous. Do we have any speed readers? <laughs> <laughs> so, to your point about 2024 and beyond, my analogy I used before the meeting 
where you had four rungs below you before you were in the water, and now you're in the water a foot. It's going to get a lot deeper between now and the next few years. Mm -hmm. That same development on Route 100, though, that hurts the fire contract is going to going to add to the grand list. I mean, there's some pretty substantial things in front of planning and zoning. So, mm -hmm. yeah. well, hopefully, we can. And and the um, reappraisal uh, is set. You're planning on having that done in 2023, or um, TBD? 2024. Okay. It'll so that would hopefully. affect the grand list in 2025, or? It'll, no, it's going to maybe 2026. It's a couple of years to get it done. Okay. And of course, it changes everything dramatically. And, and it will change the tax rate, but it shouldn't change how much you actually pay. That's what I was having this discussion with somebody yesterday, and he was all concerned because he owns a fair bit of property up on Ring Road or someplace. And uh, I said, <laughs> yeah, the rate's going to change, but the amount of money that you pay is not going to change that much because it's all going to be reapportioned. Uh, be reapportioned. And the, and the and basic it's budget of the town is just going to increase by and, yeah, and provided its usual the, percent. the process works the way it should work that that rationale also applies to your state education tax payment right. so they understand that you know they make they make the adjustment just as we do mm -hmm. like i try to tell people that the municipal tax rate is structured to service the debt okay mm -hmm. bill will argue with me and say that debt is you know budgetary costs aren't debt in other words paying salary, paying, buying vehicles. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be debt. The municipal building is a debt. It's all debt as far as I'm concerned because it's money you owe, right? Right. And you generate taxes to pay that mm -hmm. debt, yeah. the whole circle of it. Uh, if you can control the debt, then you can manage your right. tax rate growth fairly well and mm -hmm. I think the town has done that in the last number of years and to your point about tax reappraisal uh, it's kind of a similar formula like that mm -hmm. I mean your tax rate your, your appraisal rate will go up but that should bring the tax rate down for right. most people the newer homes you know, by rights, they'll get whacked harder with the new tax rate because their appraisal rate is current, you know, with, and it's a new home where if you've been living in a home for 25, 30 years, that home is depreciated. Uh, your tax rate will go, uh, you know, your appraisal will grow up and your tax rate will come down. Out of pocket should be very similar. Right. If anything, on, on the older properties, it should come down a little. By right. But the housing market right now yeah. is a little bit Your house. point, yeah. But, it's, yeah. but that's <laughs> but, but the, the housing the market is going to be worth that much I agree with everything. But it's right. all relative. It's in like it, it, everyone that's right. had a certain dollar value. If they, if everyone goes up 30%, it's right. all equal. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to make a difference. Yeah, the one, the one issue I've spoken a little bit with Dan about that would make a difference, but as of right now, the... It's not the way the, the law, the regulations are, is uh, short-term rentals. A short-term rental is, is a single family home in the grand list. And um, something that's more of a long-term Airbnb strikes me as something that should have more of a commercial valuation. Yeah. Um, but that's not something we can fix on our own. That's something the state has got to Yeah, that's change, a valuation issue versus a but, and but it, certain towns are addressing the, uh, whether uh, you can do short-term rentals, right? Like Morristown? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of... Yeah, but I don't know how they had the right to do that legally, I to be honest know, with you. Yeah, that's an interesting question. It's well, just... A lot, a lot of towns that are really changed out. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and, and Morristown did, so I don't, you know... It's no different than the federal government starting to dip their fingers into it dictating what you can charge for rent. A lot of towns are getting engaged in the short-term rental housing. Um, some towns are starting to regulate. Some towns are, are starting with a permit requirement, which may not have a fee, just to understand what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's going to just be an evolving issue for some time, I think. 
And you think it'll be decided at the state level? Because it's, I think those are no longer really owned and <laughs> occupied anymore for the most part. Well, I, I know. There, I there's the a state whole state range of stuff going on. I'm just one, state, I'm wondering what, what the regulatory uh, framework is. I think framework the state has, has to give some this. better guidance on how they're valued. Mm -hmm. Right. They need, um, it's a property valuation. For, for the rest of your questions, I think there's a housing task force that might have some oh, there at some point. So. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I you, guys, you guys are sort of. All good. <laughs> we'll have another one. You go on. I looked on my okay. on the email. Okay. On the, you want on the, on the summary, is everyone it. It was right. good with the uh, operating budget summary for 2023? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's a great summary. Uh, and we have the warning, which... Um, you want signatures on the warning? I, I brought everybody a fresh copy. Look it over one more time before we leave here tonight. All right, I'll house services. Do you want a motion? Do you want a motion? Do you want, one copy, want, a that, yeah. you want one copy that's going to yeah, require we'll signatures? I'm ready to sign. We want a motion and a second and a, and a vote. Yeah, we should. Well, please take a minute and look it over. Okay. Some typos. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Whatever you might see, I'll fix it now. So we went, essentially we went back to the original. Except so for an adjustment to the mm -hmm. senior center and a correction to some spelling and punctuation. Danny, are you gonna be able to stop by my office and sign it next, tomorrow maybe? Yeah, as long yeah, as, as I'm not a uh, sick sick, sick tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll come in. in. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll email I'll you email if, I, if I don't feel comfortable coming in. Okay, well, we can work that out for sure. Double mask. I also, yeah, I also, uh, is e-signature allowed? Because I have like a, I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to you so tomorrow. We can publish it with four. Mm -hmm. If we need it, um, the version we'll publish in the time Argus, is that the signed version? I think we can do that. And I don't need that till Wednesday. So we, we still have some time. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get it to the Times Argus by Wednesday. She's mm -hmm. The word forning is inaccessible, but that's okay. What happened? I said I think the word forenoon is inaccessible, but that's okay. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> I know that's around. standard language. That too. That's like goes back. Here you hear you. Well, this <laughs> is a historical uh, event. So my point on the whole tax rate thing, or the reappraisal, controlling the, the debt, which produces your tax rate, once you do a reappraisal, the money that's asked, now your reappraisal's here, the money that's asked from that same group that pays that debt should go down, should. Yeah, in other words, the tax rate goes down. The only thing I worry about is um, <clears throat> the tax rate. Yes. The only thing you worry about is what, Karen? Oh, uh, <clears throat> before this big boom, Dan and I had a conversation. At that time, there was a sort of a, a, a climate of homes, mine included, that were selling at a proportionately higher margin than your home, perhaps, or 
a home that already had a much higher tax value. So there was a dialogue that houses in my neighborhood were going to go up mm -hmm. at a substantially higher rate than uh, other neighborhoods that had. I think a reappraisal is meant to level that playing field. And I hope it goes that way. But I'm just saying, from a personal standpoint, there was some anxiety in that conversation for me. But, you know, we, it, it, it's overdue. It has to be done. Yeah. The, well, the, it's almost it. like, it, it, you know, we get to a point where we're, I won't say s spending beyond our means, but we get to a point where you got to step back down the ladder so you can start over again <laughs> and start crawling back up. You know, it's, uh, <clears throat> I think that's, it's supposed to, like I said, level the playing field. But again, controlling the debt, even after a reappraisal, if you can maintain controlling that debt, the ask, the ask from those great mm -hmm. list people will be is, as painful. It's still the same or under, mm -hmm. you know, that's what drives your tax rate up. That's is true. Is asking more because you've accumulated more debt. And then there's a degree of more debt that comes anyway year over year. It's just or less if you pay off the bond. With due respect right. to Tom, exactly. I mean all that is sticking in my head right now. Exactly. Chris is Bill Sheplug giving a presentation saying the community's debt load is manageable, and I trust that professional opinion personally. Um, I don't disagree. We should not be trying to increase it astronomically, but well, the goal is to keep it manageable while meeting our needs. Depending on whose eyes you're looking through, I guess in a, this is the way I'll put it because I don't have any other way of putting it. You know, getting foolish about expenditures, about things that might not necessarily need. It's need versus wants. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can stay away from the wants, yeah. I mean, that controls the debt, or the ask. The more you ask, the more your taxes go up. Plain and simple. So are we doing a motion for this warning that we've just signed, or are you happy with the signature? A motion. Yeah. A motion. A motion out of vote. Everybody's okay with what's there. I sure. think everyone signed, but we do need a formal motion. Yeah. Okay. I'll move uh, we accept the uh, warrant as uh, just signed by all of us. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We have a warning. Thank you, Karen and Tom, and the many revisions. We appreciate it. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for <laughs> took us a full two hours to circle back <laughs> to where we started. I had never gone through this. A chartered city you have, you know, four articles. <laughs> Welcome to Small Town Fun. Woo! I, I just I know Lisa no sure over here, her. but I I'd be remiss to say I thought it was a wonderful <laughs> article that she had about Tom. And I, and I didn't realize oh, that, that yeah. I didn't realize that Bill also was a mineral science major. I, I don't I don't read the articles. I um You didn't read the article? Uh, no. Well, it was a good article. Time. And I think it was written by a student reporter, I will yeah. say. Yeah. Giving due credit. Yeah. Right. But it was from the roundabout book. Absolutely. You're right. It was uh, I thought it was an excellent, you know, article introducing Tom to the community. Mm -hmm. But I even learned something built being a mineral science. Major. Well, it gives you uh, some explanation for the granular explanations that he would deliver. Uh, where I can't so I remember it. I'll make a motion to adjourn if there's no further business. Thank you. Thank you. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carried. We stand it's adjourned. Good night, Danny. Thank you all. Hope you feel better. Yeah. Good See you, Danny. We made the night.